Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuba. Hopefully you've already seen my previous two videos in which I unboxed and explained this puzzle, Melinda Green's amazing four-dimensional 2x2x2x2 Rubik's Cube or Hypercube. If you haven't watched those videos, I do recommend you go and watch those now because this video will make a lot more sense if you've seen them. In this video, I'm going to walk through how I solve this puzzle. Uh, I should mention this is not intended to be a detailed tutorial and the method I use is definitely not a fast way of solving it, it's just the way I solve it. All right, so start with let's scramble it. I do this the way I showed in the previous video with these uh, three moves repeated over and over. All right, I'm going to consider that solved. So let's get the uh, timer out and let's get going. So the first thing I do is make two of these center diamonds white and yellow. Um, so. Oh, we've got two of them that have got almost all white and yellow, just a couple of pieces to get in. Plus we've got this bar here. All right, so there's lots of options. So first of all, I can do that. So now I've got a white and yellow diamond. Uh, next, oh, I can do this. Notice I can't turn this end cap independently of the other end cap, but as long as I turn them both the same distance, uh, then that's fine. So now I've got this. Situation. This, 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 and this. Right, so now I've got these two yellow and white diamonds here, and what I want is to have no yellow or white opposite them. Um, and the way I can do that is like this. There we go. Right, so now I've got uh, a diamond with no yellow and white, opposite a diamond with no yellow and white, which means when I swap them this way and this way, I will have no yellow and white in the diamond. So now I do the first of three gyros. And what that's done is it's taken those yellow and white centers and put them into this sort of outermost axis, put them into the corners on this um, half of the puzzle. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to make another two yellow and white diamonds. So I have a bar here. Got yellow. Oh, I've got another bar there, actually. That's interesting. So let's just do this. And the reason I do it this way is because it's easier to preserve these. You don't have to preserve the corners, in fact, but preserving two whole diamonds while you make the last two is just kind of painful. If I wanted to do it fast, I guess this is not the way I would do it. But since I'm not too worried about that, I don't really mind. Um, oops. Let's see, where has this got us? Uh, okay, so we want that to go there. So we made a bar. Uh, we're going to go now. I want this to end up here. Means I want it to be there. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go. Um, no. Do I want it to end up? I want it to end up here, actually, I think. So that, yes. And then. Mm -hmm. That and that. Right, so now we've got a yellow and white diamond and we've got two yellow and white bars. Now this is what I wanted. I've got two yellow and white diamonds and I've got these yellow and white corners. I'm going to put the diamonds so that they're hidden in the middle there. I'm going to do the second gyro. Now I just do this quick setup move before doing the third gyro. So now that they're opposite each other like this, final gyro will put all those yellow and whites onto the outer axis. There we go. Now I just need to separate them so that I have yellow on uh, one half of the puzzle and white on the other half, which is usually, yeah, pretty easy to do actually. So, like that. So now we have a white half and a yellow half. And what we've done effectively is reduce this down from a four-dimensional puzzle 
into two three-dimensional puzzles in a way. Um, and I can solve each of these halves as if they were two by two by twos, with a couple of exceptions. One being that we might get some parity cases. There are various kind of cases that can't occur on a normal two by two by two. Um, and the other is that I have to keep these connected to each other like this. Um, in any case, I'm going to start with, oh, I'm going to start with green, which looks very nice. Bum bum, bum bum, bum bum, bum bum, right. So we've got this green layer done. Uh, and that wants to go clockwise, and that wants to go clockwise. So this tells me I've got an impossible um, case because both this corner and this corner want to twist clockwise, and you can't have that on a regular 2x2x2, two by two by two, so I have to fix that. There's probably lots of ways to do it. The way I do it is I bring this down to here. I remember this wants to go... Oh, wait a minute. What I want to do with this one is turn it anti-clockwise so that it then wants to go anti-clockwise. Right, so this corner here wants to go anti-clockwise. And I want to twist this corner clockwise. Okay, so it's this clockwise, this anti-clockwise. So I'm now just going to do a commutator to twist those two corners. Um, and after I've done that, I'll explain what I'm doing. So R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, and I do D, R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime, and that should be D prime. Okay, so now, if I switch these back around, uh, everything's a bit, oh no, it's not quite so bad, look, there we go, so dum dum, dum dum, and now hopefully, yeah, okay, now we have a normal OLL case with these blue pieces on the top here. So just to explain what I was doing there, um, if I want to do a U move on, the, on this top half of the puzzle, I can just do the U move like that, but then I have to also do this move down at the bottom. If I want to do an R move, what I do is I move the R face into the middle, and then I do this kind of axial twist of these two layers together. But in reality, what I do to do an R move is I do that. So I turn them separately from each other, but it's the same thing. And by just repeating those, I can do um, all kinds of algorithms, as I just did. And in fact, this time, I do know this OLL case, but I'm not sure that I know how to do it on this puzzle yet. Um, so I might do it actually just by doing that corner twist algorithm again, because... Oh, no, no, they're in the wrong place anyway. All right, so I'll just do it with students and see what happens. So R, U, R prime... U, R, U2, R prime, and then a lefty soon here. So L prime, U prime, um, L, U prime, L prime, U2. And now we have a Y perm on the top. Now, I can't do a Y perm from muscle memory on this puzzle, so I have it conveniently written down, so I'm going to do it from that. I hope you don't think that's cheating. <laughs> Actually, I don't care if you do. <laughs> R, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R, F prime. All right, so we've solved one half of the puzzle now, and now we get to solve the second half in the same way, which is uh, the same process. So I'm going to do Now notice when I do a turn like that on this top layer, I have to do it on the bottom layer, and I sort of mess up this bottom layer. But actually all I'm ever going to be doing is turning this 
bottom end cap 90, 180, 270 degrees. And we'll see what happens with that at the end. Um, what am I doing? I've forgotten where I was. So I'm going to do this. Do the green layer. Um, so, ah, and this is good. So what I'm noticing is that this bottom layer is off by 90 degrees. And this is good because when you do a T-perm on the top half, it rotates the bottom end cap by 90 degrees. And you can end up in a state where this end cap is off by 180 degrees, that's okay. But if it ends up 90 degrees off, then you've done an illegal move somewhere along the line. So this tells me we're okay. So I'm going to do the T-perm now. R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R two, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime, and yeah, there we go. I got lucky. Um, at the end, I didn't have an end cap twisted by 180 degrees. Um, so that is now solved. I hope you've enjoyed watching me solve Melinda's incredible 2x2x2x2 two by two by two by two puzzle. Um, please let me know in the comments what you think. And if you'd like to get hold of one of these yourself, please see Melinda's instructions, which I've linked in the description below. Um, I've spent a couple of weeks with this puzzle now, and in many ways I feel like I've barely scratched the surface, but I have realised what an amazing innovation it is and how complex it must have been to get it from concept to reality. So I would like to thank Melinda Green, uh, not only for creating this puzzle, but also for um, inspiring the lively community that's springing up around it. Again, links below. And also I'd like to thank Melinda for helping me with useful advice and tips along my journey so far. I really do recommend you try this puzzle out for yourself. Uh, it's currently available as a set of 3D printed parts from Shapeways, you guessed it, link below. Um, but I know that Melinda is working on a mass produced version which will probably be cheaper and I guess easier to put together as well, so you might want to wait for that to come out. Either way, if you do go for it, I'll look forward to hearing about your experiences with this extraordinary puzzle. So, there we are. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.